Mm-hmm. Good input there. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, guys? I'm Cody. And this is Eli, and you are watching or listening to Commander Cafe. Today we are going to take a look at Arcades the Strategist. So Arcades the Strategist is one and bant that is green, white, blue for a legendary dragon, elder dragon, with flying and vigilance. And whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Each creature you control with Defender assigns combat damage equal to a toughness rather than its power and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So now we have a truly Defender Tribal Commander. And so, overall, from what I've seen of this deck, when Cody plays it, it is a really fun deck. It is exactly what you think it is. It's Walls Tribal. Walls Tribal, kind of aggro-ish, which is weird to think about with Walls. Um, it is on the lower power level scale. Um, I would say around the six ish level. Um, so don't think it's going to be hyper competitive, but I like to have multiple levels of commander cards, uh, commander decks so that no matter what play group I'm playing with, I have a deck that is the appropriate power level for who I'm playing with. So let's start off with card draw, card draw slash card advantage. So first up, we're going to have a new card from Ravnica, uh, Guild of Ravnica, and that is Beast Whisperer. It's basically going to give you a double effect of your commander. Uh, whenever you cast one of your creatures, you're going to get to draw two cards if you have this in Arcades out. The, the fact that most of your creatures are two drops or three and four drops, like very quick, cantrippy type uh, creatures... Um, you can just get on these engines where you're just playing a creature, drawing another one, playing it, drawing another, and you can get a bunch of creatures out extremely quickly. Definitely a good synergy. Next up isn't card draw, but it's definitely card advantage, and that's Geist of the Archives. And this one is beginning of your upkeep, you get to scry one. That's the big thing with it. Um, so if you could play a 3-drop 4-4 um, that lets you scry at the beginning of your upkeep, you would. So that's strictly why this card is in there. In this deck, it just happens to be a 0-4, but when you're attacking, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Even or when blocking. you're defending. It, if, as long as you're commander out, it is a 4-4. Four, four. And then the next two kind of fall into the same vein, where we have Wall of Mulch and then Portcullis Vine. Portcullis Vine. Something like that. Uh, okay, so we have... One that is, you play green and sack a wall, you get to draw a card, and the other one is two mana, tap it, sack a creature with defender, and draw a card. So this is great if you have extra mana during the board wipe and you don't have any protection for your walls, you can at least turn those into more creatures. Very strong effects, and those two, or those four, tied with Arcades, mm -hmm. you have all the card draw you basically need. I wouldn't be surprised if you have more in there, but... We definitely have deck. more, but these are the wall-themed card draws. And again, like you said, the fact that we have Arcades out letting us cantrip every time we play a creature is... You get to turn through your deck extremely quickly. Yeah, your, your hand is always full. Next up, we are going to take a look at Mana Ramp. And we have a few very unique ways of doing so in this deck. Um... First, we have Wall of Roots, and you can put a 0-1 counter on him. Not a negative 1, negative 1 counter, but a 0, negative 1 counter on him. And add green to your mana pool. So you can get 5 activations out of this and get 5 mana right off the bat. Or you can spread it out over a few turns and still have a 4-4 four, four defender if you only need the 1 mana, or what have you. The next two are the big ones for this deck. Um, definitely must include... That is Overgrowth Battlement, which you can tap to add green for each defender you control. So there's been times where I've had 20 walls out, so this just taps for 20 green. And lastly, Axe Bane Guardian, which does a similar thing, except you can add it in any color combinations that you want for each defender you control. Extremely powerful mana in this deck. 
Yeah, those are those are mini creature based Gia cradles in your deck, basically. Yes, they are amazing. They do great work in this deck. So, what do we have next? Next up, we have the board wipes, which is probably my favorite part about this deck because all the board wipes I have in this deck basically just hit your opponents. Uh, most of they don't hit hardly any of your creatures, and a lot of them are well. One of them is cheaper than four mana, which you don't see too much of. But we have Solar Tide. You can you'll always choose the second ability of destroy all creatures with power three or greater. So your stuff never doesn't get hit. Bell the Mighty, destroy all creatures with power greater than target creature's power. You can either choose Arcades to protect him and wipe the bigger stuff, or you can choose one of your walls and just completely wipe the board from everyone else's field. Next is a new one from Rivals of Ixalan. We have each player choose or slaughter their strong, and each player chooses any number of creatures he or she controls with power four or less. And then sacrifices all other creatures he or she controls. You can target every single creature in this deck and keep all of your creatures for three mana. Okay, next up, <laughs> we have Wave of Reckoning. Um, each creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. We have one creature in this deck that we will get to later that this actually hits in our deck. Um, but for the most part, our deck is going to be largely immune. And then the last one, probably my favorite... Is from Almanket, destroy all creatures of power three or greater from dusk. And then we go to dawn afterwards, which returns all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand. So we have both a good board wipe in this deck and graveyard recursion. All in one card. Definitely a powerful card. Probably your all-star for your board wipes, right? Yeah, I mean, they're all... Since they're all almost one-sided board wipes, I don't even have Cyclonic Rift in this deck because while it is a good card and that instant speed is not to be overlooked, the fact that I have so many one-sided board wipes as is, mm -hmm. um, I just chose not to put it in there because I don't didn't feel like I needed that power boost for this deck. Um, this deck is actually a very budget-friendly deck. Um, overall, the walls are very cheap. Um, there's a few expensive cards, but... It can be built on a budget. My first iteration of this deck, I bought nine dollars worth of cards from the five dollar five cards for a dollar box at our LGS. And while it's not as good as this final build, it's it was very serviceable. Following that up with targeted what? removal. So I'm just gonna list two ones here, two of them here. We of course have things like uh, Path to Exile and sort of Swords to Plowshares. So yeah, Swords to Plowshares. But um, first we have Capsize, an amazing bounce spell that can be rebought. We are saving a lot of mana with our creatures. We're being very mana efficient with our, our creatures in this deck. Um, so we will a lot of times have that buyback. And then we have Dismantling Blow, which can deal with artifacts or enchantments. And later in the game can draw us a card. Two cards. Two cards. Reading the card explains the card. <laughs> <laughs> next category. And next one, we have stacks. We It's not a heavy theme in the deck, but because of the nature of our deck, we are, are given access to two very unique cards when it comes to stacks. And the first one is Marble Titan. And it says, Creature with power three or greater do not untap during the controller's untap phase. So this only hits itself and Arcades in our deck. All of our other creatures are going to get to untap, while the rest of our opponents are going to be largely affected. And next up... Meek Stone. Uh, that is a one-drop artifact where no creatures with power greater, two, uh, greater than two untap during their controller's untap steps. Again, one mana to shut down most of your opponent's stuff while keeping yours unfazed. The, the nice thing about your your stacks is it doesn't hurt you in almost any way, so you can still close out the game faster than most stack decks. Yes, I, I do have win cons in this deck. I can close out the game a lot of times in one big alpha strike. Not going to pull any Grand Arbiter schemes. No. Okay, next up we have 
our protection. So a lot of times with this deck, because we are cantripping so much with our creatures, playing a bunch of creatures out, we can have these really huge boards if we just play everything out. So we need to have ways to protect our creatures. Uh, so a few ways we have Heroic Intervention, giving all of our creatures Hexproof and then Destructible until end of turn. Uh, return to the Ranks. So you can return, pay into X, and then return that many creatures with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. A lot of our creatures, a lot of our walls are two mana or less, so it's going to be able to hit a lot of targets. We have Kalfenner's Urn, which is an artifact for three, and whenever a creature with toughness four or greater is put into the graveyard from play, you can remove it from the game. At the end of the turn, if there are three or more cards that have been removed from the game with the urn, sacrifice it. If you do, return those cards to play under their owner's control. Yeah, it's just a good way to kind of like, over the course of a few turns or after a board wipe, you get to rebuild. Mm -hmm. That is definitely some major spice added to the deck. Yeah, it's one of my favorites, but probably the most powerful way of protecting your board is Eerie Antelude. And this lets you just flick or... Er, Exile all your stuff until end of turn. So if you have an opponent plays a board wipe, you can hold up mana and play this. You flicker everything out, and then end of turn, it all comes back in. Arcadia sees all of those walls come back in, so you're getting to draw all those cards all over again. I've gotten to do this to avoid a board wipe, and then I draw 20 cards on my next turn. And that's generally when you can close out the game. Because your opponents just have their board wipe, and then you have a bunch of stuff that has pseudo haste. And a bunch of extra cards in your hand. Definitely some powerful protection spells there. And next up, we have the ways to win. A um, few ways to really kind of give us a overrun effect. Number one is tower defense, and that is gives your creatures plus zero, plus five, and reach until end of turn at instant speed. So this is where you can just really just hit your opponents for a ton of damage when each of your creatures are essentially getting plus five, plus five until end of turn. Um, it's amazing. And then if you do need to defend against like a dragon deck, it does give your walls reach so they can handle that. And then the next one is Assault Formation. It acts almost like a second copy of our commander um, in that it's letting our walls deal damage with their toughness. But the other big thing is if you have something like Axe Bane Guardian and you have a ton of mana, you can just give your creatures plus zero, plus one for each three mana you pump into it. So you can just pump your walls up crazy big and go in for the Alpha Strike. Not bad. So, now that you've gone through all of those different sections of your deck, do you have any secret masterful cards in that? Yes, we have two secret tech cards. And the first one up is Reconnaissance. This is a pet card of mine. And <laughs> uh, the fact that you can attack in with your walls willingly and not worry about them getting hit with the crackback... Um, so you can wait to see what they assign damage as, pull creatures out of combat if it's going to kill your wall, and then it gives your wall pseudo vigilance, so the ones that do get through can still come back and block. And the last secret tech that we have is probably the spiciest card in the deck, and that is Wild Pair. So Wild Pair is an enchantment, costs six mana. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, you may search your library for a creature card with the same total power and toughness and put it onto the battlefield. So in a lot of decks, this is hard to do. You really have to do a lot of math and figure out what cards can get what and kind of figure that out beforehand. With this deck, going through every single card in the deck has a pair that it can get with this card. And most of our walls are zero fours, so you have a lot of options, a lot of choices you can hit, and makes this deck a little bit more like a toolboxy type deck when you have this out. Not bad of a list. Um, how do you feel about the deck overall? I think it's very fun. It's not like I said. It's not going to be a. It's not a combo deck. It's not very. Like I'm going to just combo out and win without combat damage. You have to swing in with this deck. Um, which makes it a little more vulnerable, but 
it's still a very fun deck to play. Um, so if you have a little more casual group that doesn't have a ton of combos, or you you know you have that play group that plays a little lower level, this is a good deck for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. You get to draw a ton of cards, which I love to do. Um, it's probably my favorite thing to do in Commander. And the fact that your commander lets you do that while just playing the deck is is amazing. Definitely. Um, so, if you liked our deck or liked his deck, and you want to give any feedback on cards that you think should go in, go ahead and leave a comment below. Uh, if you think that his deck sucks, you're going to get definitely a quick response from him. But <laughs> let him know why. Give us a reason. Yep, and if you like this deck and you want to purchase it, you can go to our not-quite-sponsor, Card Kingdom. Let them know in the comment section as you check out that we sent you, and hopefully we can get an official sponsor from them in the future. This video is not sponsored by Card Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have for you today, so this is... This is Commander Cafe, signing off.